Good morning. Previously, I did a, a video on this upcoming uh, solar eclipse in spring of 2024, where Sun, Moon, and Chiron are in exact conjunction, a conjunction that is exact down to the degree. And I really suspect that this eclipse is going to be truly momentous and have a huge impact on things next year. And in my previous video that I did last summer, I talked a little bit about its impact on America. What I want to do now is a, a greatly expanded video, and I'm gonna do it in three parts because it'll probably be that long. Uh, so today, in the first part, uh, I'll show you the uh, where the planets are on the solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024. Uh, I'll show you a lot of uh, people and countries uh, that may be uh, wounded by this eclipse one way or another. That'll all be in part one. In part two, uh, I'll go over America again and talk also about the uh, upcoming uh, presidential election in 2024. As I say, I really don't know for sure if Biden and Trump are actually going to be the candidates. They're certainly what we expect, but at their age, either one could pass away or have a serious illness and have to drop out. Uh, Trump could be in jail. Who knows what will happen between now and November 5th, 2024. Nonetheless, uh, in part two, I'll talk about sort of the general astrological weather for that day and uh, what things look like uh, for both uh, President Biden and Donald Trump in uh, fall of 2024 and on that election day. And then in part three, uh, I'll spend more time going over the joyous and transcendent uh, aspect of Chiron and at, we'll also take a look at a, a similar eclipse where Sun, Moon, and uh, Chiron were conjunct. It wasn't as exact as this one is going to be, but it's a somewhat similar eclipse that occurred in 1875, and we'll see how America and other parts of the world were affected by that. And then the very last thing, I'll do in part three is to revisit uh, both the uh, solar and lunar eclipse, uh, eclipses that we will have in spring of 2024. And I'll go into uh, some additional detail into those charts. So that's what I've got planned. Uh, let me get started uh, by sharing my screen. Okay, I've got to just do a few housekeeping things here so I can see what is going on. So just give me a second. And I think I'm ready to go. So this is part one. Chiron, the April 8, 2024 solar eclipse, America and the world. A year of wounding, healing, or joy one or the other, or maybe all three at the same time. Well, first let me say that I don't really predict events. I just forecast the astrological weather. And as the illustration below suggests, in between this weather and specific events stand people with the capacity to exercise free will. So you can see it over here on this side, I've got astrological weather. On the right-hand side, specific events. What stands in between those uh, two poles? Free will. We decide how we're going to respond to the weather. Just like when a hurricane is coming our way, are we just gonna do nothing? Uh, lose our house, uh, possibly drown or die? Are we gonna leave town? Are we going to stay in town and fortify our abode? Uh, exactly what happens depends not just upon the astrological weather, but on the decisions that we make. So that's why I don't really predict events. 
Okay. Thus, there are some people who frequently turn astrological lemons into lemonade because they are mature and have learned how to handle adversity. And President Biden tends to fall into this category. And that is true. Time and time again, I have seen very adverse aspects in uh, President Biden's chart, and yet he barely uh, catches a cold uh, in response to them. And this is because early in his life, early in his career, uh, Joe Biden went through a lot of adversity. And he learned from that, and he grew from that uh, mentally and spiritually. As a result, he knows how to handle a lot of stress and adversity. And as a result, uh, I can never uh, predict uh, with a lot of accuracy uh, what's going to happen to, to President Biden. But then there are other people like Donald Trump who are not like that. And from an astrological point of view, they are very predictable. Hence, when Trump has a bad Mars aspect, it is almost a certainty that he will be very angry. Similar, similarly, while certain individuals will learn how to transcend their astrological conditions, countries and masses of people are often more predictable in how they will respond. Uh, I really love uh, Donald Trump's horoscope because he is extremely predictable. Anytime there's a bad aspect, you pretty much know exactly how he's going to react to that. He does not turn his lemons into lemonades uh, quite so much. Uh, and so it's very interesting studying his chart and then looking to see what happens to him. Uh, with President Biden, uh, like I said, uh, he can handle a lot of adversity, a lot of what's thrown at him. And so while the weather report is accurate, uh, you don't often see that much change uh, in Biden and his life uh, when these things happen astrologically. Okay, moving on. On April 8th, 2024, there will be a total eclipse of the sun in which the sun, moon, and Chiron will all be at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries. Just look at this. This is very rare. Obviously, at a solar eclipse, you have sun and moon uh, in exact conjunction down to the minute. But for a third planet, particularly an outer planet, like Chiron to be at that same exact location, that is extremely rare. And as they say, that'll leave a mark. Some will be wounded, some will heal, and a few will transcend. And as the next slide shows, the path of totality for this eclipse crosses over a good portion of the United States. Okay, and here you can see where the eclipse will be visible, visible it's going right over uh, central Texas, so uh, people in Texas will have a, a good view of this eclipse, as well will some other states. Okay, now even though Saturn has moved on and Pluto has moved into Aquarius, uh, that's since, is since fall of uh, 2023, the positions of most of the outer plants are approximately the same as they were during those eclipses of October 2023. Thus, the spring of 2024 may see either a continuation of, it, of events from October 2023 or new events that are along the same lines. This is very interesting and very important to me. Uh, Saturn is going to move about 14 degrees or so between uh, October 14th, 2023 and April 8th, 2024. Pluto moves only about four degrees, but it will make a significant sign change from Capricorn into Aquarius. And then the other outer planets, uh, by the time we get to the spring eclipses, they're going to be in about the same position that they were at during the uh, October eclipses 
of 2023. So over here, just showing those outer planets leaving Saturn out, you can see where things were on October 14th, 2023, during the solar eclipse, on October 28th, during the lunar eclipse in 2023, over here, where they will be uh, on the March uh, 25th, 2024 uh, lunar eclipse, and here where they will be on the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse. And you can see these diagrams, they all look very similar. Uh, these outer planets for each eclipse, they're in pretty much the same position. And that sets the stage for the same things or the same sort of things to happen. And that is not good news because we all know how tumultuous October of 2023 was with the invasion uh, by Hamas into Israel and the subsequent war on Hamas by Israel and the devastation it's at, uh, that is occurring in, in Gaza. So this is all very worrisome for sure. All right, uh, let's move on a bit. Now, additionally, during the October 14, 2023 solar eclipse, the sun, moon, and Mercury were in opposition to Chiron, which intensified the war and suffering between Israel and Hamas. And here you can see it here, uh, Mercury at 17 plus degrees Libra, in opposition to Chiron at 17 plus degrees Aries, that opposition is, opposition is exact to the degree. Not quite to the minute, but to the degree. And then sun and moon are very close by, also in opposition to Chiron. Uh, this is the astrological signal for a high probability of wounding to occur. <laughs> and sure enough, it did. Okay. Thus, as we shall see the April 8, 2024, Solar eclipse may continue this and bring about even more wounding and suffering. But before saying any more, uh, let's talk a little bit about Chiron. Uh, well, before I go on to the next slide, let me move backwards. On October 14th, 2023, Sun, Moon, and Mercury were in opposition to Chiron. A uh, fairly strong opposition, but when we go back to the upcoming April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse, you can see why things look even more intense. We've gone from a fairly strong opposition to an incredibly exact conjunction between moon, sun, and Chiron. So that suggests that wounding may repeat itself and it may be even more intense. But let's talk a little bit more about Chiron. And Chiron, also known in astronomy as 2060 Chiron, is a small celestial body that normally resides between Saturn and Uranus. However, it also occasionally travels inside the orbit of Saturn and outside the orbit of Uranus, and you can see here the orbit of Chiron is in white. Part of the time it's inside the orbit of Saturn, and then part of the time it's outside, further away from the sun than Uranus. Okay, now it was discovered in 1977 by astronomer Charles Kowal, and the glyph for Chiron, a K on top of an O, is said to, to stand for object Kowal. So there's the glyph. For Chiron, object Kowal. Now, Chiron is named after a centaur in Greek mythology who was uh, renowned as both a teacher and a healer. However, Chiron was eventually wounded by a poison arrow and one was unable to heal himself. Hence, the image within astrology of Chiron as a wounded healer. However, even though we may subconsciously be drawn to myths, that embody many of the empirically derived characteristics of a planet, remember that astrology is not mythology. 
and what is actually observed in practice is much more important than ancient stories. I do think that we are subconsciously drawn as a group to name these planets after, more often than not, after myths that will correspond well to the astrological uh, implications of that planet. But that's not always the case. Uh, astrologer Dr. Rick Tarnas uh, has pointed out that the planet Uranus seems to have uh, much more in common with the mythical figure of Prometheus than with the figure in mythology that uh, the name Uranus corresponds to. So there are some astrologers I know who, you know, if the myth, if mythology says such and such about uh, the name for that particular planet, they seem to automatically assume that the planet is going to have those characteristics and work that way uh, in the real world in astrology. But that is not necessarily the case. So always keep this in mind. Astrology is not mythology. We can't depend entirely upon mythology for knowing what the characteristics and actions of, of a plant will be. We have to see how things actually work uh, in practice. Okay. Now, Chiron is often associated in astrology with wounding but in my experience, it is really a drive within us to transcend the visible world that we see. Plus, it would make no sense for us to have a drive to, drive to wound ourselves. Also, traveling between Saturn and Uranus, Chiron is a bridge between the known and the unknown, between what we can see, Sun through Saturn, and what we can't see, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So, Chiron forms a bridge between these two realms, and in its purest form, it is a sweet, joyous, enlightening sensation. But for many, the hard Saturnian shell that they've erected around their reality has to first be cracked before the light can enter. As I often say, you can't make a cosmic omelet without cracking a few cosmic eggs. Okay, over here are some of the characteristics, uh, keywords associated with Chiron, certainly wounding as one, uh, also healing, making whole, transformation, awareness, spiritual growth, and service to others. I sometimes call Chiron the, the LSD of planets. And the reason for that is because Chiron really wants to bring joy and light and transcendence into our lives. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, a lot of people will have a bad trip. <laughs> so it's the LSD of planets. Uh, in the coming year, it is quite possible. It would be wonderful if during this uh, moon-sun Chiron conjunction on April 8th, it'd just be incredibly wonderful if the whole world transcended up to this higher spiritual level and responded to the more transcendent and joyous aspect of Chiron without having to be wounded in the process of getting there. That would be incredibly wonderful, but I doubt that is what's going to happen. Based on experience, it seems much more probable uh, that there will be a lot of wounding in the world next year. There will be also some healing and there will be a few who do achieve wonderful transcendence. But for most of the masses, uh, I anticipate that there's probably going to be a lot of wounding in 2024. Uh, and I would be very happy to be wrong in that prediction. Oh, I'm not really predicting. I'm just uh, giving uh, subjective probabilities. Okay, thus, while many individuals will respond to Chiron's call to transcend, many more will first experience wounding as a byproduct of this drive. As Thomas Edison once said, success is 
perspiration and 10% inspiration. And when it comes to Chiron and the masses, it's often 90% that are wounded and 10% that are inspired. Okay, now we're going to look at uh, some of the individuals and countries uh, around the world uh, that will have a potential for experiencing wounding. And we're basically going to look at Putin, Russia, uh, Netanyahu, Israel, Hamas, Iran, and also King Charles III and the United Kingdom. And we'll save uh, America uh, for part two of this presentation. Okay. Now, here I have uh, Putin's chart on the inside and the April 8th solar eclipse in the year 2024 on the outside. Let me uh, read first this note at the bottom, however. There is some controversy regarding Putin's birth data. I've seen this chart that most people use work quite well, and the birth data has been personally confirmed by Putin's webmaster. So I think this data for Putin's birth is accurate because it just seems to fit like a glove and seems to work quite well. Now the question is, how is Putin going to be uh, impacted by this solar eclipse? Well, he's got transiting sun, moon, and Chiron in the sixth house, opposite natal Saturn, Neptune, and also uh, a bit Mercury in the 12th house. Most of the time I'm using like a two degree orb here, but occasionally I'll stretch it a bit as I did for Mercury to include it. Well, first thing you might notice, it's uh, the sixth house, 12th house axis. This could involve uh, some illness uh, for Putin, also some hidden enemies or possibility. And even though uh, the sun, moon, and Chiron are not exactly opposite or uh, conjunct or square any planets to the, to the degree, uh, there are going to be midpoint activations here. And in particular, I'm using a, an orb of one degree for these midpoints. And we're going to have our Sun, Moon, and Chiron in opposition to the Sun Mercury midpoint, the Mercury Saturn midpoint, and the Saturn Neptune midpoint. So uh, this conjunction over here, it's hitting the midpoint between Saturn and Neptune uh, uh, quite closely, very, very closely. And let me uh, digress to say just a, a word here about Saturn-Neptune conjunctions. Saturn, uh, it rules structure. It tries to make things concrete. Neptune dissolves boundaries and structure. And when you have these two plants in conjunction, you often get ideological changes of various sorts. And Russia has been uh, very sensitive to past Saturn-Neptune conjunctions. The Bolshevik revolution occurred uh, after a Saturn-Neptune conjunction. In 1952, there was a Saturn-Neptune conjunction and Stalin died and there was a subsequent de-Stalinization of the Soviet Union. In 1989, we had a conjunction and the Berlin Wall came down. And I love that one because the wall is actually a structure that dissolved before our very eyes. Um, just a perfect uh, you know, picture of what Saturn conjunct Neptune means. And of course, the fall of the Berlin Wall was um, followed by the collapse of the Soviet Union. And given how Russia uh, often changes direction under these Saturn-Neptune conjunctions, I find it very important and very interesting that Putin was born with uh, uh, Saturn and Neptune uh, conjunct. 
uh, less than four degrees apart. And when he came into power, that also signaled a change in direction for Russia. They were trying to become a Western style democracy uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, but then Putin came along and he took them back uh, in another direction. Uh, Putin had a desire to be like an, an old time, old style Russian czar, of absolute power. Very interesting. Of course, in 2025, we're going to get a near conjunction between uh, Saturn and Neptune and early Aries. And then February 2026, there will be an exact conjunction of uh, Saturn and Neptune at about zero plus degrees Aries. And most astrologers are uh, expecting for there to be big changes in the Russian government by that time. Uh, most of us expect Putin to be gone by then, if not before. So anyway, this solar eclipse, it should have a big impact on uh, Putin. It should affect him personally. Uh, there are lots of rumors of him having a severe illness that may become more apparent. He may have hidden enemies taking, uh, taking over for him. Okay, now also on the eclipse day, we've got uh, transiting Uranus and Jupiter, they're conjunct, conjunct natal Jupiter. More importantly, they're squaring natal Pluto, the south node and the midheaven in Putin's chart. This is a big push for change. Uh, the planet Uranus always uh, breaks up the existing pattern. And what it's trying to break up is Putin's power, his status in society right here. And in summer of 2023, uh, transiting Uranus was also squaring Pluto and that's when we saw Prigozhin uh, march upon Moscow with his army. And there was a chance that Putin might be toppled at that time. Now, another aspect we have going on is Neptune. Transiting Neptune is making a pretty strong square uh, to natal Mars in Putin's chart. Uh, this could... Uh, result in some violence. He could be very angry. He could have violence uh, done to him. There could be assassination attempts, or he could just have very uh, muddled, unclear thinking that uh, rouses his, uh, the anger, the aggression in him. And let me also point out that when Chiron is affecting a person, not only might they be wounded, but then they might lash out and wound others too. Okay. Now here's something interesting. Here's a little bit from the Wikipedia. Presidential elections are scheduled to be held in Russia in March 2024 in accordance with country's uh, electoral law. The first round will be held on Sunday, the 17th of March. If no candidate receives more than half the vote, a second round will take place exactly three weeks later on the 7th of April, 2024. That's just a day before the solar eclipse. This date, March 17th, is about a week before a lunar eclipse. And the, the winner of the election is scheduled to be inaugurated on the 7th of May in 2024. Well, uh, not many people seriously believe that there are free elections uh, in Russia these days. It seems like they're mainly a sham election. So I would be somewhat surprised if um, these elections uh, take uh, all spring to be decided. I'd be surprised extremely surprised if uh, Putin is defeated. Uh, but what I want to show you is that 
on each of these dates, you find a lot of the same major aspects going on. And this shows that there are certain trends, certain astrological influences that are going to be persisting uh, throughout the spring in Putin's chart. And particular, in particular, one of the things that persists is this opposition from Chiron to planets over here in uh, Putin's 12th house, uh, the square of transing Uranus to Putin's uh, natal uh, Pluto south node in midheaven. And the square from transiting Neptune to natal Mars, that's going to uh, persist quite a while. It, uh, it starts to dissipate when we get to May 7th, but another square will take its place. Uh, here again, you see pretty much the same stuff going on the day before the solar eclipse uh, in spring or in April. On the 7th of April of 2024, we still have Chiron in opposition to these plants over here. It's joined by the sun. Uh, Trancing Uranus is still making its squares to these guys. Uh, the square from transiting Neptune to natal Mars has been joined by the moon. So that intensifies it a little bit on that day. And if this election drags on to May 7th, 2024, well, we still have Chiron in opposition to these plants in the 12th house, this time joined by Mercury. Uh, we still have transing Uranus, making its squares to Pluto, the south node, and the midheaven. Uh, the square between transing Neptune and natal Mars, it's waning. It's now about three degrees apart. But on this day, we'll have transiting Mars making a square to natal Chiron. That's uh, fairly strong within two degrees orb. And so this can go along with this transit, this opposition from transiting Chiron uh, to cause more wounding of some sort uh, to Putin. Okay, now if we look at Russia's chart, uh, it reiterates a lot of what we see in Putin's chart. And one of the most important aspects here is transiting Uranus in opposition to the natal Pluto-Venus conjunction. Now, in Russia's chart, Pluto represents Putin. And this is because, not only because Pluto is such a, a powerful plant, but because in Putin's natal chart, he has a Scorpio rising, which is ruled by uh, Pluto. And as Pluto is in the 10th house, his status in society, it's conjunct the midheaven and the south node there. And that is why astrologically Putin is so powerful and is also why he sees himself as sort of a, an old style Russian czar. He looks back to the past. He wants to restore Russia and the Soviet Union's glory and create an empire with him as uh, the czar. Well, with Uranus in opposition to uh, Pluto and Venus, there is a push for change. The people want some change in their homeland here. Okay. Also, transiting Saturn is going to be very strongly opposite uh, natal Jupiter. This is going to further stifle Russia's growth. Uh, they will be feeling more restrictions. And over here, note that transiting Pluto is conjunct the descendant opposite uh, the ascendant. Uh, very, very strong. Uh, there are going to be forces from others pushing for some sort of transformation of Russia. And then we have transiting Sun, Moon, Chiron in conjunction in the 10th house. Uh, this is telling us what part of Russian society will probably be affected by this eclipse. And the 10th house, it's probably going to be the leaders, uh, in particular, Vladimir Putin, maybe some other leaders too. 
And lastly, we've got some midpoint activations going on. The Sun-Moon Chiron conjunction is going to be strongly opposite of the Venus-Jupiter midpoint in the fourth house. And so I expect uh, the people, uh, the homeland is going to be wounded uh, in additional ways uh, as a result of this uh, solar eclipse. Okay. Now, here I have uh, Benjamin uh, Netanyahu's chart on the inside and the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse on the outside. And he will also probably be strongly impacted by this eclipse because sun, moon, and Chiron are at 19 plus degrees Aries. His moon is at 19 plus degrees Libra, exactly opposite uh, to the degree opposite that conjunction. So his health could be affected one way or another. I expect this will affect him uh, quite personally. And he has some midpoint activations going on. Uh, this conjunction is going to be opposite his Sun Mercury midpoint and his Venus Mars midpoint. These are very personal planets. So I expect this is all going to take a personal toll on him. He also has the transiting lunar nodal axis conjunct the natal lunar nodal axis and natal Neptune. That is going to intensify things for him. And to make things worse, he has transiting Saturn strongly in opposition to his natal Saturn. So it's going to be a time of frustration and restriction for him. Okay. Now let's take a look at Israel's chart. Well, transiting Uranus is conjunct and opposite uh, natal sun and natal Chiron. It's conjunct natal sun opposite natal Chiron. Oops, let me go back one. This is stimulating this uh, sun Chiron opposition in Israel's natal chart. And I've talked about this before. Uh, when it works at its best, the sun, that is the soul of the nation. Chiron is his drive toward transcendence. Uh, when these two drives are integrated with one another, and opposition always shows two drives that the goal of those two drives is to integrate. When they do integrate, and this expresses its the higher side of Chiron, then you see Israel fulfilling its mission of being a light unto the nations. That is interestingly embedded in its uh, uh, 1948 uh, chart, astrological chart. But, well, I should say that I think we do see a lot of this light of Israel uh, in the sciences and the academics in Israel, they are just superb. They do superb uh, scientific work investigations in that country. And I suspect that the arts are also uh, very superb in Israel. Those are two places where I think the light, the joy, the inspiration of Chiron shines through. But uh, in any country, it's often the politics that lag behind uh, the genius of the people. And so politically, we often see Israel, the soul of the nation, being wounded. And we see Israel, in turn, wounding others. And it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not assigning... Uh, uh, blame to anyone per se. I'm just describing the dynamics, uh, how it works out. Now, transiting Uranus being in conjunction or stimulating, activating the sun Chiron opposition uh, during the uh, April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse, the reason that's important is because this same thing was happening during the October 2023 eclipses. Uh, and of course, we all know what has happened and 
happened in October of 2023. So we're repeating the same astrological condition and worst case scenario is we get a repeat of uh, all the war and violence in the Middle East that we were seeing in October of 2023. Uh, this is a very real possibility, uh, but I always have hope that people will take the high road and see if maybe this time around, instead of just repeating everything, uh, could they possibly uh, tune into a higher expression of Chiron, either healing or transcendence? Okay, now transiting sun, moon, and Chiron will be in the sixth house of Israel. Uh, for an individual, that's uh, illness. So this could stimulate some hardship. Now, this conjunction isn't making a a direct, a strong conjunction, opposition, or square to any particular planets, but it is stimulating this 6th, 12th house dynamic in Israel's chart, which can result in a hardship for Israel and hidden enemies. And it's also activating some midpoints. Uh, it's strongly opposite the Jupiter-Pluto midpoint, and it is strongly squaring the uh, Moon-Venus midpoint, the Mercury-Mars midpoint, the Saturn-Uranus midpoint, and the Uranus-Pluto midpoint. So there could be a lot of wounding triggered on or around this time. And like I say, with uh, transiting U Uranus, we're repeating the same astrological configuration that was present on October 7th, uh, the solar eclipse of October 14th, and the lunar eclipse of October 28th. So this is rather worrisome. Now, if we look at uh, how this eclipse will affect Hamas, we don't have an exact birth time for Hamas, so I just use 12 p.m., but we do know the date uh, on which Hamas came into being, December 10th, 1987. Uh, about the only planet that's going to move around a lot during the day is the moon. Uh, it's not involved in what I'm going to talk about right here. Even if it were, it's probably uh, not going to uh, move around that much. Uh, even if I did have an aspect to the moon I wanted to focus on, I probably won't miss the mark by much. Okay, so the moon is going to be somewhere around 14 degrees Leo uh, in this chart for Hamas. All right, now if we look at this sun-moon Chiron <coughs> conjunction in Hamas's chart, look at where Hamas's Jupiter is, uh, 19 plus degrees Aries. So this is a very strong conjunction occurring here, and this is probably going to wound Hamas quite a bit uh, and wound its luck, its ability to grow. Uh, additionally, we have transiting Neptune uh, conjunct this lunar nodal axis very strongly, the natal lunar nodal axis, and making a strong square to natal Chiron. So more wounding and a lot of confusion Neptune usually brings in confusion, makes things unclear because it dissolves boundaries. And lastly, the transiting lunar nodal axis is going to be making a square to natal Venus. Uh, so things are probably going to be intense and not very comfortable for Hamas. Uh, there could be a lot of wounding here. Now, if we look at Iran's chart, uh, let me point this out. Uh, Iran, its moon is at 13 degrees Leo. Hamas's moon, we estimated to be at about 14 degrees Leo. Hamas and Iran, they get along very well. They are on the same page. And of course, Iran is often seen as the puppet master pulling the strings 
for uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, and some other uh, terrorist groups. And this could eventually lead to Iran's downfall. At some point, Israel or other countries may get tired of Iran pulling the strings using these terrorist groups to do their dirty work. Uh, and they may say, well, we can't completely stop uh, the puppets, so we'll just go after the puppet master. And if that happens, there's a good chance that it could happen sometime around April 8, 2024. And that is because the sun moon Chiron conjunction at 19 plus degrees Aries, it's going to be exactly opposite to the degree to Pluto, Iran's natal Pluto at 19 plus degrees Libra. So it's a good candidate to likely receive a lot of wounding uh, in the coming year. And uh, it's going to be the 12th, 6th uh, house axis that is stimulated in Iran's case. So that brings back a lot of karma, a lot of wounding. Uh, again, maybe things will uh, work out in a higher way. Maybe people will take the high road instead of the low road. But based on past history, uh, the low road is a little bit more likely. So I think there will very likely be a lot of wounding turmoil of some sort involving Iran. If not Israel or others attacking Iran, maybe something going on internally or something else that we haven't thought of yet, natural disasters. Now, we're also going to have transiting Mars uh, in pretty strong opposition to natal Saturn. That's war and restriction, frustration going together. We have transiting Pluto, death and destruction in opposition to natal Jupiter, uh, Iran's drive for growth. Uh, so that also looks ominous. And we have uh, transiting Jupiter and Uranus in opposition to natal Uranus and squaring the natal sun. Uranus uh, causes a lot of rash decisions, uh, unexpected things to happen. Uh, and the same aspect was present during the uh, October of 2023 when Hamas attacked and during the two October eclipses. So there may be rash decisions on the part of Iran's leadership or even a, a sudden change in leadership. All sorts of possibilities, all sorts of things that can happen that are related to the meanings of these planets. And we never know exactly which one will happen or exactly how it will happen. We can just make educated guesses based upon what we've seen happen in the past. I definitely expect uh, not only Putin and Russia, but Netanyahu, Israel, Hamas, and Iran to be strongly impacted by this April 8, 2024 solar eclipse. And of course, that is quite worrisome because this could lead <coughs> to an expansion of this conflict in the Middle East. And that could be very destabilizing for the entire world. Oh, also, we have midpoint activations going on. Let's see what we have here. Uh, our conjunction is going to be opposite uh, the Venus-Jupiter midpoint and squaring uh, the Mars-Neptune midpoint. So this uh, could cause lost suffering for the people. And uh, this involves... Uh, often aggression or war based upon uh, delusional ideas or some inflamed passions of some sort. So, doesn't look good. Now let's take a look at uh, King Charles III in the United Kingdom. Interestingly, I've been listening to uh, uh, the astrology podcast where astrologers... Uh, Chris Brennan and 
great mundane astrologer, uh, Nick Dagan Best, uh, they spent about five hours uh, talking about all sorts of historical events that have occurred on or near eclipses. <clears throat> and the royal family in England, uh, they have uh, quite a history of important events occurring near eclipses. In fact, King Charles's coronation occurred the day after an eclipse. Well, on April 8th, 2024, let's see what we have. We have uh, transiting Pluto square, Charles's natal moon, which is in the 10th house. Uh, this could affect his health or his status in some way. It's rather ominous. We also had the transcending lunar nodal axis conjunct natal uh, Neptune and Venus in the fourth house right down here. And so there might be uh, something involving the royal family, maybe some scandals if uh, Neptune is involved. Uh, and transiting Neptune is going to be squaring both natal Uranus and natal Jupiter. So something unexpected might happen again. Since Neptune is involved, uh, perhaps it's a scandal of some sort. Uh, something uh, we don't know about that may come to light. Now, the Sun-Moon Chiron conjunction I put inside a dash circle because it's not making uh, uh, close conjunctions, uh, squares, or oppositions to any of the natal plants in Charles's chart. But uh, it is in his 10th house, uh, which means that his status in society uh, could be impacted in some way. It could be wounded in some way. However, uh, King Charles, like uh, President Biden, often strikes me as a, a mature individual who's probably learned how to roll with the punches and deal with adversity at this point. So if we're lucky, if he's lucky, he will be able to just take it all in stride. Remember, this is the astrological weather. It's not always exactly what happens. Uh, the weather is indicating a heightened potential for wounding particularly to his position or status, but it may not occur. Just like Pluto squaring uh, his moon, uh, this could uh, really has the potential to be devastating. He might have some severe illness, could die. That's always a possibility. Certainly, we expect there to be a lot of stress, but as with President Biden, he may be able to handle that stress. He might be able to take it all in stride, in which case uh, he deals with it successfully. Everything turns out okay. However, there is also a midpoint activation in his chart. Uh, this conjunction of Sun, Moon, and Chiron is going to be a very, a very close opposition to his Mars-Pluto midpoint and this does not look good because mars is a uh, aggression pluto is death and destruction put those together add some wounding uh i hope he does not have physical problems or severe illness it could possibly work out as just something within the royal family and it may be taken care of quietly we may not even hear about it but this is what the astrological weather shows. And if we look at how the United Kingdom will be affected uh, on this date, well, let's see, what do we have? Uh, transiting sun, moon, and Chiron, they are squaring the natal moon in the 10th house. This is kind of reiterating. Uh, what we saw in Charles's chart, the, the monarchy or other heads of state might be wounded in some way as a result of this very, very strong square. We also have Pluto, transing Pluto. Whoops, go back one. 
opposite uh, natal Jupiter, which again is in the 10th house, which represents uh, the rulers in that society, the people with power, the king, the prime minister, people like that. Pluto is death and destruction. So uh, keep an eye on the United Kingdom in spring of this year, around the time of this eclipse. Uh, there may be some change in status among uh, the rulers, either the prime minister or the king or other royals. But just keep an eye on it. Uh, the transiting lunar nodal axis will be conjunct the natal lunar nodal axis, that is just going to intensify whatever is going on. And then there is also a midpoint activation here. Uh, we're going to have Sun, Moon, and Chiron making a strong square to the Pluto-Chiron midpoint. Ah, oh, Pluto, death, Chiron, wounding. This really does not look good. This is in the fourth house. Could affect the people, uh, the country quite a bit. So this is where I'm going to stop. And in my next video, this is where I will begin looking at how uh, all of this is going to impact uh, America. That will be the topic of uh, part two of this video series. But for now, let me stop sharing my screen. And here I'm back. And so from what we've seen so far, uh, this April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse, it's probably going to be very momentous. I'll say more about the solar eclipse in general in the very last video of this series, part three, but with Sun, Moon, and Chiron conjunct, exactly, exactly conjunct down to the minute. That is very rare. That is very powerful. And that is why 2024 may be go down in history as the year of wounding. If we all respond to the higher aspects of Chiron, though, then it can be a year of healing. And also, it can be a year of spiritual growth and transcendence. Some will indeed respond to it in that way, and I only hope that we all do so. And we can help bring about that outcome by uh, working to be kind to ourselves, be kind to others, don't heart, harm or hurt others. And even if you're poor, uh, give a dollar, maybe a dollar a month to charity if that's all you can afford. But everyone should uh, give to charity regularly in some way to help make this a better society. I like to give uh, um, a little bit of money to the food bank each month because everyone needs to eat. And at the end of the year, I give a lot more depending upon how much I have left over. But I always give some amount each month to the food bank to help uh, feed those who are in need. And doing these sorts of things can help make the world a better place. Uh, you can also uh, contact your political leaders, tell them what you would like them to do. Uh, they may not listen. They never seem to listen to me. But you can also, in addition to taking concrete physical actions <coughs> to make this a better world, uh, each day, spend some time in prayer and meditation. Uh, try and bring forth a higher vibration of love within yourself and the world, and try and visualize light, uh, breaking up the darkness in many places around the world. Uh, and You know, whatever the current situation is, imagine it taking that next step. Like in the case of uh, the conflict that's raging in the Middle East now as I make this video. Don't focus on that. Focus on the next step, which is negotiations, people talking with one another, uh, getting agreements 
uh, to allow civilians to get uh, safe passage to where they need to go and to get uh, food and shelter, things like that. Uh, as I used to say, if you dream it, it can happen anyway. So that's pretty much what we can do. Uh, there's a possibility, slim possibility of great transcendence next year and great healing. So visualize that, imagine how that could come about. But based on past history, uh, the greater probability is that there will be a lot of wounding next year and a lot of people and countries are going to be affected by the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse for good or for bad. And that includes Putin, Russia, Netanyahu, Israel, Hamas, Iran, uh, King Charles III, and the United Kingdom. And of course, America too. But that's the topic for my next video. So for now, I'll say so long and be well.